I'm Steve McLaughlin, Dean of the Georgia Tech College of Engineering, and this is The Uncommon Engineer. We're just absolutely pleased as punk to have you with us. Please say a few words. Yeah. At Georgia Tech, entrepreneurship is in our blood. It's in our maker spaces, our innovation classes, and in some of the startup programs we have. We want our students to develop an entrepreneurial mindset, which is both valuable in the company environment, valuable to startups, but also valuable if they want to become doctors or lawyers or teachers. That entrepreneurial mindset will guide them the rest of their careers. In previous episodes of The Uncommon Engineer, we've explored engineering research that our faculty does. Today, we're shifting our focus to our students who are creating the next generation of uncommon engineers. Today, I have one former student and one current student who have started a company called Aerodyne. They've invented a product that helps semi-trucks save on fuel costs, and it's set to disrupt the trucking industry. So today I have Jace Delker, who is a recent graduate of our mechanical engineering program. Welcome, Jace. Yes, sir. Thanks for having us. It's an honor. I also have Tyler Boone, who's a current student in mechanical engineering, who's about to graduate. Uh, welcome, Tyler. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I can't tell you how uh, excited we are today to have some students. We have amazing students at Georgia Tech, and you both are just fantastic <laughs> representatives uh, you know, for our student population. So, so thanks for being here. Thanks for starting your company, and, th and thanks for sharing some of the some of your experiences to to our students. And so, before we talk about about your company, maybe the first thing to talk about, um, Tyler, if you could share how it is you found your way to Georgia Tech, and what got you interested in entrepreneurship or the idea of possibly starting a company. Absolutely. So, it's funny. Uh, Georgia Tech has been on my mind since second grade. Believe it or not, I had a Georgia Tech hat that I wore to school, and my I remember my teacher would ask me, you know, isn't it a bit early to be thinking about college here in elementary school? And I was like, no, I just really want to be an engineer. And a lot of my friends at that point didn't even know what an engineer was. Um, but I got that from my father. And he, he was an entrepreneur for the last 30 years plus. And, um, and so when I was a kid, I would be in the shop with him and watch him as he worked and created products from ideas. So he would start off with an idea. He would design it out in CAD and then make it in front of me. And so my whole life, I saw that process and really fell in love with it and wanted to do that myself one day. I knew I wanted to be an inventor of some kind, and I knew that I wanted to work for myself for the longest time. And so entrepreneurship, to me, is something that it's not about the money or the fame or anything else. It's more about the independence that you can get and, and the freedom. That's what it's all about, because if you work for yourself, then you have options, and especially if you're doing what you love. And if you do what you love, and that aligns with the path that you're taking in life, you doors open that you didn't have any idea were there, and that's what I want out of life. Well, that, that's, that's so fantastic to hear, because those are exactly the kinds of students that we have here, and the students that we really hope uh, to come here and, and focus on their ideas. So, Jason, I you know would be interested in hearing your story too. Sure. You know, you've just finished. I have. So, yes. so having just finished, or graduated from Georgia Tech, you know, you might even have a slightly different perspective now that it's somewhat behind you. So, you say a little bit about how it is you came to, to Tech and now what it's like uh, having just finished. Sure, sure. So, in this goes all the way back to, you know, just like how Tyler mentioned when he was a lot younger. I, uh, from an early age, I always had a fascination with just machines and how things worked and, and building things. And, um, you know, a, a big contributor to that was Legos. I'm sure that a lot of people here have a, have a you know, a common, uh, you know, background in Legos, especially being at an engineering school. So, I mean, I would build my own things at a very early age. And my mom would just watch me as like, wow, like this is just really something different. And she realized that those were like characteristics of an engineer, which at the time she didn't even know what an engineer was, you know. And so we started to sort of, you know, cultivate that. My parents really cultivated that in me. I was actually homeschooled all the way from first grade to, uh, to 12th grade. So I had a lot of extra time to explore, you know, my skills and, and develop them. And so uh, going into uh, middle school and high school, I actually started my own small business of actually restoring antiques. And so I, I have a 
huge love for anything, you know, old and mechanical electrical, namely like vintage radios, jukeboxes, uh, old tube televisions, antique brass age fans, old cars. I love cars, and uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But, you know, <laughs> my dad and I, we had restored, you know, my grandpa, we restored a couple cars, you know, as I was growing up. So, like, I remember the first time my dad handed me a grinder and asked me to, like, cut a hole in the frame of this car. And I, I don't remember how old I was, but I just remember just him trusting me to do that. And just remember when I, you know, drill out the hole and the bolt fit through, I was like, wow, that's incredible. I just wanted more of that, you know. And so from there, of course, you know, when I was in middle school and high school, I couldn't have really completely afford to do that. So what I ended up doing was starting a small business restoring antiques. And I eventually led me to a job at an antique store. And I eventually worked out to become a manager of that antique store. And, you know, people would bring me stuff from all over the southeast. And I just fix whatever it was and make money doing that. And I had more money than all my friends throughout high school just because I was fixing old obsolete technology. It was the best thing. Um, so coming out of that, that really just gave me a huge appreciation for not only, you know, entrepreneurship and, you know, small businesses, but also engineering and the way that things used to be done and the way that, you know, the way that, you know, people just really were passionate about what they built and what they designed. And I just, I really wanted to carry that passion into, into Georgia Tech. And so I applied to Georgia Tech and, and got in. And of course, four or five years later, here I am now. Jace, just spend a couple couple minutes describing uh, what Aerodyne does and what your product is, and and then we can talk about how you got there. Sure. So at Aerodyne, what we're developing is a rear aerodynamic attachment for tractor trailer rigs. So what really sets it apart from anything else in the market is actually it's parabolic, it's curved, like the back of a boat or a race car or or aircraft. You know, you you know you look at the back of a tractor trailer rig and you have this gigantic squared off area, and you know you might not realize it, but there's actually about 300 pounds of force pulling on the rear of the truck at highway speed. And so we're doing what we can to reduce that the best we can. And so where we started was we actually used um, parametric design and designed the shape in CAD. So we found out what the DOT regulations were, how much area and volume you have to play with at the rear of the truck before it's, you know, of course not legal to run on the road. We found out that it's five feet from the rear of the truck. So we went on to try to figure out what is theoretically the most efficient shape that you can put on the rear of the truck. And it's this sort of parabolic, uh, what's also called a catenary curve. And so then we try to figure out, well, now that we figured out this shape, it turns out that the simulation showed that it was about 17% drag force reduction, which is about 160 pounds roughly, which from these simulations equated to between eight and 12% fuel economy increase. And so then we got really excited about that because that was more than double the competition for rear devices by, by a long shot, it was incredible. Um, turns out that's about $6,000 in fuel economy savings per year and a five month ROI at our price point of uh, slightly under $3,000. So it makes a lot of sense to trucking companies. So we spent all this time really thinking about what is it, what is, what is a huge problem that we would be able to solve that is profitable, that has a huge impact, that, that can really make a difference. So, Jace, I'm hoping you can say a little yeah. bit more about where your company stands. I think uh, when I think I got it that yeah. uh, you know I've been behind a truck, yeah. you know, yeah. too many times, and I've mm -hmm. seen you know kind of the flaps, you know, on the back of the truck. Yeah. I figured were for aerodynamics. So, mm -hmm. I think even most of our audience kind of understands the the place that you are. Right. And so, can you talk a little bit more about? Um, about where it stands and sure. you know the challenges you face, mm -hmm. why it is you're spending, uh, uh, why you're there until three o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, what, uh, what are you guys doing right now, if you can share it? Sure, and, absolutely. Um, yeah, so right now we're, we're finishing up our, um, our full scale prototype. We probably about, I'd say 90% done with it. Um, it's a very difficult mechanism to engineer, but it's not, a complex mechanism, but it's trying to engineer that simplicity in, and that's also robustness, which is a you know a very good long-lasting product, especially a product that's going to be on a truck for who knows how many years, how many miles. It needs to work every day, every hour that that truck is on the road. Um, typically, trucks they have major maintenance every 500,000 miles, so we want our product to at least meet that, um, and that is a major challenge. And you think about cars, they have you know major service every you know few tens of thousands of miles. Trucks, you know, 500,000 miles is crazy, you know, so. So one thing we're doing right now is um, we're doing a series of road tests. And so uh, we've done two road tests so far, and they've been extraordinarily helpful. Um, so we're gearing up for our third road test, which is going to be um, very close to our production mechanism and our production uh, device. And then from there, once we validate that product, we're going to be transitioning into uh, sort of changing into a manufacturing mindset. 
So I'm 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 really curious about where where you think the company might be headed. So you've 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 started, you've proved a bunch of things out, you're about to uh, you run a couple more tests including a full truck. Yep. And um, what what do you think is next? How 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 big is the company now? Mm -hmm. um, what do you what do you think? What do you think's next, uh, sure. Jace? You want to share? So for Aerodyne right now, of course, like I mentioned before, we're getting ready for a third road test, and that's going to be probably one of our. It's going to be what's oftentimes in the industry called validation. You know, you're you're validating that what you have built will perform exactly as you intend and for your customer and meet all the requirements and that kind of stuff. And so, uh, once we finish up those road tests, like I said before, we're going to transition to manufacturing and start really hitting marketing a lot harder than we have before. Um, we've been kind of laying low a little bit because this is, you know, this kind of product is, you know, if it really, really gets out there, it's going to, we're, we're going to get more orders than we know what to do with. We've, we've already received 28 orders for our device. And um, so that's very, very exciting. And we're also at this point, we're, we're pursuing um, investment through both CreateX and also a few other, you know, VC firms around the Atlanta area to help sort of drive forth that early production run. So one really interesting advantage that our our product has is that we've been able to do so much with so little money so far. So through CreateX, the startup launch program, they give you $4,000 to to start your company. And we've been able to, to build multiple small-scale prototypes, actually two small-scale, you know, lower-scale prototypes, and one full-scale prototype, and do all this validation with it so far. And we're going to be able to finish that with just the money that, that wow. CreateX has given us. And so many startups, you know, regardless of what their industry is, a lot of them need millions of dollars to get even off the ground to even maybe even prove out what their product is. And so that, you know, for us, we don't need very much money to get off the ground. And so we can just move a lot quicker. Um, and so we're really excited for those next steps. And that's, that is just around the corner. W within the next few months, we're going to be scaling up that manufacturing. Extreme long term, we would like to have a whole uh, set of other aerodynamic devices for the truck that are just well engineered just like this one is. Um, and so one thing that I think that sets us apart from the competition is that for the competition, if you look at their device, it's, it's these flat panels, right? And you can just really look at that and tell it is not the most aerodynamic shape. You know, even people that don't have an engineering degree know that curved shapes are more aerodynamic. You look at an aircraft, it's curved, it's not square, right? And so we just know that, that we have a, have a edge on the competition based on just what we're able to engineer out and prove out and build and design. And so we're, we want to basically just go around the truck and just identify areas. Where can we make improvements on the competition? Can we double it? Can we three times it? And just go from there. And then long term, we would love to have a brand of trailer, an Aerodyne brand trailer that is the most aerodynamically efficient trailer in the world. It could save 20 or 30 percent on fuel, fuel costs because we've gone on we've gone on every corner conceivable edge of that trailer and found places to improve it for the customer and really just use that to drive drive for the the trucking industry and just really give it a boost in the economy and help them grow faster and deliver products to to Americans and, and the world because those those costs they trickle down and they, they allows you to have cheaper produce cheaper computers cheaper everything you know that's that's really really what we're what we're about both of you have mentioned the uh, the create X program yeah. um, and so some of our listeners and probably most of our listeners mm -hmm. don't really know the create X program and it's a it's a program at uh, here at Georgia Tech, where we, we teach a little bit of basics about entrepreneurship through one course, and we help mm -hmm. students build prototypes. So I'm, I'm curious about a bunch of things is, sure. is you know, we want, we want to attract more and more students that are interested in um, uh, building their own careers or defining Absolutely. their own careers, yeah. all the way to actually starting companies. And so can you say a little bit about your experience with the CreateX program? Um, what it is you learned and the, the kind of value that it provided um, outside of coursework. Sure. So this is one thing that I think really, really sets Georgia Tech apart from any other school. Georgia Tech is a trailblazer and just a, a pioneer when it comes to just allowing students to be able to carve their own path if they're not interested in, you know, going into the corporate world, which, I mean, you know, all, all these different programs that allow students to be able to explore their own entrepreneurial uh, interests and take their ideas as far as they want. And so really, for me, one thing that really attracted me to Georgia Tech was the Invention Studio. And so the Invention Studio, of course, is a is one of the largest student-run makerspaces in the, in the entire U.S. And it's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing place. And then 
Not only that is that you have createx, which is a is a set of classes and, and capstone, and also you have startup launch, like was, was mentioned before, that that helps students really take their ideas to the next level. And it's it's something that I am really really thankful for because it's it's just really something that Georgia Tech is doing different and really trying to break the mold of what a traditional college experience looks like. You know, because you can go in, you, you could you know you could go into Georgia Tech with an idea and then just really start to cultivate that during your time at Tech and then graduate with a business already in place. That, that, is, that is huge. <laughs> you know, wh where else can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, beyond that too, it's like the CreateX program, it's more than just instilling entrepreneurial confidence. It's, it's also, it's, it's tapping into that potential that everybody has. Mm -hmm. Everybody at this school that graduates from Georgia Tech has an incredible amount of untapped potential and and that's what this is all about. It's like reaching down in there and, and, and pulling it out. Because I think all of us can change the world if we set our mind to it. And if we had the right infrastructure set in place at the very beginning when we're going through college. The, the, the question that I have now is because I think a lot of, a lot of let's say students, high school students or younger students that are listening, yeah. you know, kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, th these two Georgia Tech students are so smart and I can't possibly have the same ideas. And I can't yeah. possibly, you know, they're way, way ahead of me. And this idea of I have my own ideas or maybe starting a company. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think yeah. we want to say to those students, no, you just do it. Exactly. Get going. No, that's, can you, can, yeah. Tyler, can you talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, or it's not that, in, you know, make it less intimidating for the students. Yeah. Tyler, Cause I think no, it absolutely. is. I mean, it's, I think it's very easy to get in your own head and limit yourself. Um, I mean, I've I've done that so many times. I mean, and there was a, there were many times just in my time that I was at Tech that I felt like I didn't even belong here. It, it boiled down to time management, work ethic, you know, just like spending the time because that's what it is. It's like some people like it takes me, for example, forever to memorize something, and you know, and and so that's a, that's a disadvantage that I have that a lot of people don't. At the end of the day. You just have to believe in yourself. And, and I know it's just, it sounds so simple, but that's really what it is. You have to believe in yourself in the most fundamental level. Really great about what you just shared, Tyler, was it's, it's not so much about your skill set that you're good in math and science. It's really about your mindset exactly. and how you approach things um, and how you treat yourself and, and, and all of that. How do I get started? How, what, what advice would you give maybe, you know, to, uh, to a high school student, either as they go into college or even a recent graduate who, who are really excited by everything you said, but don't have an idea, maybe mm. have a group of friends mm. uh, that are like minded, but yet don't don't yet have that idea. What what advice would you would you give them? Jace, do you have ideas sure. on what you would share with them? Really one of the biggest thing. And again, this is going to sound cliche, too, but like, you know, one of the reasons that it might be cliche is because it's, you know, it's talked about a lot by the people that fully understand it. It's really about following your passions. It's just identifying something that you love or you are an expert at and trying to find a way of packaging that into some something that can help someone else, you know. And, you know, like for me in high school, you know, nobody would ever thought there was a market for fixing obsolete 60-year-old electronics. But there was, you know. And so I always tell people, you know, they, I've had people come to me and tell me, tell me an idea, a fantastic idea. But they think that you know they don't have the skill set or they don't have the background or 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 you name it to be able to do that. And I tell them if I can make a business out of fixing antique technology, you can do that. Yeah. You know, and I've had a lot of people that have been inspired inspired by that and gone on to create something. You know, and not only that, it's about finding like-minded people, people that either have that same interest or people that just baseline want to change the world. They want to find out how and where they can make a difference, you know? And if you can tell them, hey, I've got this idea and I need your help, let's do it together. And that's where it all starts. Yeah, I think Jace is spot on with that. It's like, yeah. and we've mentioned that a, a few times so far already in this podcast is just finding that thing you're passionate in and, and, and just following it. Even if, even if it's not obvious how you're gonna monetize it, even if it's not obvious how you're gonna continue this forever, you have to just trust yourself. You know, like, like you mentioned, you know, you know, even middle school or high school students or even people that are, you know, freshmen in college and that kind of stuff, you know, you might think that because of the position you're in that no one would want to listen to you, but actually it's the opposite. You know, when you're young and you're passionate and you, you have an idea, people want to help you. Yes. Adults want to help you because adults 
have that same passion in them and they identify it in you and they want to help you achieve those things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I keep going back to my, to my business that I had in high school, you know, but I think one of the reasons that I was really successful was because I was like 17 doing this, you know, people, people were excited about what I was doing and wanted to help and wanted to give me business. And you're much more likely to get help if you know what you want. Yeah. It's huge. And really finding about what, what you want is like, look at the world through a lens of trying to identify places that you can help and you can improve based on the yep. skill sets and experiences you have. You know, look out your window and just, you know, look at problems that people might have or the problems that industry might have and just try to think, how can I help them? That's really where it starts. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, Jace, Tyler, it's uh, just been fantastic to have you here on the, on the Uncommon <laughs> Engineer. Uh, I think anyone who's listening uh, is pretty sure that you're going to be successful. <laughs> uh, certainly in this, advent in this current adventure and probably tons of adventures down the road and we really thank you for coming on you you make us proud uh, thank you. because thank you. you're doing exactly what it is uh what it is we we hope you'll do and uh all the very best with your company again thanks for coming uh, with us on the uncommon engineer thank you so much for having us thank you it's been a pleasure